Hi everyone, uh, you just finished discussing the similarities and differences between the Chesapeake and New England. Let me put in my two cents on these questions just to hit some things that I think are particularly important. Um, one, that question about reasons for settlement. Uh, you know, I, I think a overgeneralization but a useful one is economic versus religious. That while in New England, they did care about uh, economic livelihood. Religion played a really key role. This idea of creating a godly society um, that was that they were unable to create in England that played a crucial role in why people came and the kind of societies they set up in New England. In Virginia, it's largely about money, right? For the big landowners, it's about the tobacco plantations. For the indentured servants, it's about at least some getting some economic opportunity that was unavailable in England. So that's one point. Uh, second question, economic structure. Um, you know, what we end up with in uh, the Chesapeake is a plantation economy built around one big cash crop, tobacco. And this is partially, as I just mentioned, about the reasons for settlements. People were going for economics, but it also has to do with soil and weather, right? You could produce tobacco in the Chesapeake. You could not produce tobacco or another similar cash crop in New England. And therefore, we end up with these big sprawling plantations in the Chesapeake. On the other hand, New England, they don't have a cash crop that they can grow. They can do subsistence farming. And therefore, the economy is far more commercial, fishing, shipbuilding, um, you know, you know urban centers as a site of uh, commercial exchange, that's more what we see in New England. Um, as a result, we see wealth is far more equally distributed in New England. You know, Chesapeake has this sharp divide between the big landowners and all the indentured servants and maybe some small farmers. We get more equal um, wealth and land distribution in, uh, in uh, the uh, New England. So in terms of that political question number three, in both cases, Virginia and New England, we largely have the colonists running their own affairs. Um, you know, back in England, they don't want to have to deal with every little detail. They'll happily let the colonists do things themselves, and therefore we get locally elected bodies in charge with passing the laws and administering the laws in many cases. Um, we see this happen for slightly different reasons in the two places. In New England, there is this idea that we want to democratically run our own society, um, you know, as a community of church members to create a godly society. There's that element. In Virginia, um, remember we talked about the House of Burgesses as almost a recruitment tool, as a way of getting people to move to Virginia. Either way, it's a similar result where the colonists are kind of in charge of making decisions through elected bodies that they elect. However, it's fair to call New England a bit more democratic. Um, uh, in Massachusetts, they actually elect their own governor instead of it being appointed by the crown. And crucially, more people could vote in New England than could in Virginia. In both cases, it's only men, but if you recall, in Massachusetts, it's church members, which ended up being a pretty substantial portion of the population. I forget the stat might be like 40 percent of of, uh, of free men in Massachusetts uh, were church members. Um, you know, the number of people who were significant landowners in Virginia, because you had to be a significant landowner to vote in Virginia, is much smaller. And so you end up something which is more democratic in that a higher proportion of the population is able to vote in Massachusetts versus Virginia, even if by our standards today, um, it still leaves out a lot of people. So, taking off my glasses uh, for question number four, um, I had that question about family dynamics, and, and I hope uh, that wasn't too vague. What, what I was basically trying to get at is we have a pretty equal gender balance in New England. In Virginia, it's something like 80% male, and it has a lot to do with the reasons why people were coming to settle. Who's coming to Virginia? Some landowners, but it's mostly indentured servants. And therefore, if you want field hands, it's mostly going to be these young men um, who are coming over. Let's think about the impact of this, right? If instead of families coming over to have a religious mission, you have disproportionately young men, think about that, what that will do to population growth, right? If you only have 20% of your population being women, it's hard to grow your population through natural growth. And combined with the fact that we're in swampy Virginia where there's a lot of disease, it means that Virginia does not grow nearly as quickly as New England, which was armed with a much more equal gender balance from the beginning. Question number five has to do with relations between the English and Native Americans, and I won't belabor this, but let me say something. You could you could point to differences. I think it's probably fair to say that like Massachusetts had more alliances at first 
then Virginia, and Virginia kind of went to warfare earlier, but I mostly want to focus on the fundamental similarity. In both cases, the English colonists in Massachusetts and in Virginia wanted land for themselves. And that meant there was going to be conflict with Native Americans. And whether it's those wars of the Powhatan Confederacy or the Pequot War in the 1630s, we end up with this dynamic creating conflict. And that will define um, the colonial period and beyond in American history. You know, the, the English settlers want land. And that will make them fundamentally at odds with the Native Americans who live in the places that they want to take over. Um, finally, we have this question number six about the role of religion in the two colonies. And, you know, I, I mentioned this when I talked about motivations for settlements, but, you know, I don't want to act like Virginia didn't have religious people. There were churches in Virginia. But there was far more emphasis uh, on religion in New England society. You know, ev every town in New England is built around their church. Um, the laws they pass are often including laws about proper religious observance. People were required to attend church in New England. Church attendance, as a result, was much higher in New England. Um, you know, this whole idea of New England is to create a godly society that is what God wants, unlike what's happening in England. And it's just fair to say that religion plays a much smaller role in shaping life in the Chesapeake. And this takes us to question number seven, where I ask, if you look back at all the previous questions in that, uh, in the worksheet that you did, um, what role did Puritan religion play in shaping the differences? And I think you can make a case that it's crucial. It, it shapes so much. If you want to understand why people came, what people were allowed to vote, what laws were passed, the settlement patterns, the fact that they're settled in towns around the church versus sprawled out into plantations. Uh, you know, a lot of these things boil down to the fact that, like, having a godly society according to Puritan religious principles is central to the mission of New England. That said, I don't want to overplay it, and I think you know economics plays a big role here too. And in this respect, I'll remind you about climate. Right? Think about the tobacco plantations. If you did a thought experiment that the Puritans had the ability to grow tobacco in Massachusetts, think about how things might have been different. There would have been a huge incentive to have large land holdings and cheap labor imported. Indentured servitude and slavery was not unheard of in Massachusetts, and if they had the climate to produce cash crops, there would have been a huge financial incentive to be there. At least part of the reason we end up with such stark inequality and we end up with people sprawled out in these rural plantations is because they had a crop that they could grow and make tons of money that that was, uh, that, that was related to that kind of economic and social structure. So I don't want to act like religion's the whole thing, but it obviously plays a key role. All right, thank you. Um, if you have any questions, please email me, left at illinois.edu, um, and good luck in the test.